So now we're going to configure the kernel. Uh, installing firmware and or microcode. Um, now, firmware and microcode, I tend to just install it as and when I find I need it. So I'm not going to install this at the moment because this machine might not need it. Although I haven't said that, I do know for a fact that it will need it. Um, for example, the SOF, so Sound Open Firmware, is something that will be needed for Intel 10th Generation Plus, which is what this machine is. It's 11th Gen. Um, and the video hardware is likely going to need it, and I will be installing the microcode. So I will need it at some point. Um, I guess I can put in the SOF firmware because it's telling me to do that now. Um, I suppose I need to get that working for the sound, or as it won't, won't work at all. I say the firmware, I'll install that as and when I need it, maybe for the wireless, um, maybe for the network card. And the video I'll deal with when I come to do the um, GUI. So I'll install this now. This is some extra um, tools to install there, extra programs. Okay, so that's installed. I've just clicked on a link which takes me to a support matrix for the um, supported hardware. Um, so we've got several um, different platforms here. I'm not sure what this refers to, if it's the chipset or the actual CPU hardware, because Rocket Lake's not there, which is what this is. Uh, let's look this up. So it doesn't look like it mentions anything about the sound on this. There doesn't seem to be any hints there at all. Um, 
Let's have a look at Intel Tiger Lake, see what it says about that. Oh, looks like this might be related. Alright, so it's all mobile processors. Could be that it's not needed. Um, what should those do? LS PCI. And we haven't got that, unfortunately. Oh, we're in the truth. Uh, let me get another tab up. LS PCI. Let's see what this says. These are always good hints. Um, something like. Like um, and then K is it? I think would be a good switch. Yeah, this shows the driver in use and the module. So this will be handy for configuring the kernel. So you can see we've well, got an NVMe module in the kernel for the hard disk, E1000E for the network, etc. So Tiger Lake SM bus controller. So it is related to Tiger Lake then by the looks of it. Audio device, Tiger Lake H, HD controller. Yeah, SND, SOF, PCI, Intel, TGL. So it's definitely using this SOF and it is Tiger Lake. So that's slightly confusing. The fact that the, I guess is it something to do with the chipset maybe. Uh, it's called something slightly different to the CPU hardware, I guess, um, which indicates it's the laptop according to laptop chip according to the wiki, the looks of it. So it is actually Tiger Lake. Tiger Lake here anywhere. Yep. Oh, Tiger Lake processors release as part of the eleventh generation desktop, NUC, and tablet market. Such processes have the B suffix, so it's definitely not a Tiger Lake because there's no B suffix, no H suffix or M suffix. Yeah, these are all different. Yeah, they, it's these ones here 11700B Tiger Lake B desktop, and this CPU is 11700 without any suffix, but there is obviously a relationship. Okay, so that's okay, we definitely need that. Um, so that's prepared. Microcode. Okay, so let's deal with that now. As it's being mentioned here. Um, there's a lot of information on here which is, to be quite honest, irrelevant. Um, because down the bottom... Um, is the right page even microcode updates it does an explanation here about when the microcode on the chip can be updated um, generally also if you're using a pre-built machine such as this there are regular BIOS updates from the manufacturer which do normally contain updated microcode but if you don't have that luxury then this is the way to go and even if those BIOS updates are regular at least 
there's a chance that you could get this sooner than the BIOS update, so it's probably worth doing. Uh, the manual way, AMD, we want to look at Intel. Yeah, it's this article here, Intel Microcode. This is uh, a better page to work from. Um, okay, we're getting into some configuration for the kernel here, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's emerge the Intel Microcode. Uh, right, okay. Do it there instead. So here we've got a license blocker. So it's not allowing us to install this software until we've added in um, a line into the package.license saying that we accept the license. So what I do is normally to deal with this is to copy this line with the um, details on. In ETC Portage, um, I edit the license dot conf. Okay, we've got VI, so let's do NANO. Paste that in, and what we do is leave the name there, just get rid of the version, and that's the name of the license code, if you like. And just leave that keyword there. Uh, in fact, we don't need that, I don't think. Yes, should be sufficient just to leave it like that. So, uh, save that. Uh, shame we haven't got Vi actually because it would come up in some nice colours and display a lot nicer. Um, let me merge Vi actually, otherwise known as Vim. Also, if you have a preference for a particular type, kind of editor, you could probably merge that now as well. Um, and then one thing that needs to be set, which I don't recall seeing any mention of, is the editor variable in the environment to tell the system what the default editor is, and we can set that. Okay, so there's a little bit of information there. If we do e select editor list, it's not set at the moment. So if we set it now, default editor to two, and we run profile. In fact, I'll do that end of update. 
commands. So it also sets the troop, the one that was in the book. So for now, echo editor, it should equal vim, which it does. So that's good. So if I now vi license.conf, uh, right, okay, I thought that should be in color and it's not for some reason. That's interesting. Uh, maybe there's some configuration still to do that would um, change that. Right, okay, I know why. It's because it should be called package.license. I don't know why I did license.com. So license.com should actually be called package.license. Uh, That's better. So you can see that's highlighted and I don't think I might be wrong actually. Nano. No, Nano still doesn't highlight it. So it's a bit easier to read with uh, Vi. It's got the syntax in there, syntax coloring. So now we can retry this command to emerge the Intel and you'll see it's not complaining about the license now because we've accepted it. Um, right, one thing I've noticed, I think it was in the news item, which I was looking for, I couldn't find what it, but as I'm not going to be using an init RAMFS, the default now is to create an init, init RAMFS or a support for it. So I need to turn that off. So I'm just going to say no to that for a moment. Edit make.conf and add in to the use flags which are down here um, in its ramfs so at the moment a lot of what i'm adding to the use flags is to stop things happening but there will be a point where there'll be many more things that we're adding in for extra functionality so if i rerun that now you can see in it ramfs is set not to be built or the support for it in the intel microkernel and Intel microcode. So let's merge that. And what we need to do, yeah, this is the page where we go down to the bottom where it says new method without an init RAMFS. This is the best way to do it, um, especially as it says here, this will only work with 64 bit kernel and have no effect otherwise. 32 bit systems need to use an init RAMFS. This method should be preferable, especially for e five stub systems. Some other board firmware might have issues with passing paths in custom boot command line options. Since these changes are less likely to leave the system unbootable and possibly unrepairable without an EFI compatible rescue disk, which can be very tricky on headless machines. The way a broken firmware boot entry and or incorrect in it RAM FS disk would, while it also works on bar systems or EFI systems with custom bootloaders on disk. So sys firmware into microcode which is what we just installed uh, includes the iu code tool which got installed um, so it says to install micro data files for the system processors we need to make this modification here to etc portage make.conf so let's edit that and add this in somewhere to the make.conf um, so what I tend to do is put it below another thing with via it remembers the last line you on so that's quite nice uh, nano doesn't seem to do that so I'm going to put this directly under the CPU flags because it's related to the CPU just put that in there And it says to install data files for a specific process use microcode signatures it equals s and then the number so we don't quite know what it is we could find out but luckily this iu code tool will tell us so we've got the intel microcode let's run this tool and you can see it tells us the signature of this processor is um, 0xa0671 if we now run 
this bit of code here, this command, it lists all the firmware and it identifies the correct uh, microcode that matches the processor. So if you remember, if we go back to the top, there's quite a few for this family as you might expect. We've got zero A0671. So it's identified one with A0670, but this one here is the one that is an exact match. So that's the one we need to use. And it says that it's bundle 235. So we look at 235 and we can see it's that line there. And that should match the CPU ID for this processor 06A701. If we do CPU ID, no, it's not on there. Cat proc CPU info. Let's do it through less, otherwise, it'll be pages and pages. So the family is six. That's correct because we saw come out of that um, we saw it's a six begins with a six that two three five a seven and zero one so if I recall that command again a seven well one six seven sh is should be a seven in decimal so let's check that with the calculator uh, let's change this to a numerical system mode so if I type in 167, go to hexadecimal, there's a seven, so that matches up. And last of all, the last number was a zero one, and you can see the stepping is one. So that confirms that the code here, 235, and this code all match up. And you can see the most recent one we've got at the moment is 14th uh, of September, 2023. So once again, 06A701 is bundle 235. So what I'm going to do is to copy that. Uh, I'll just paste that somewhere in case I need it in a minute, which I'm sure I will do. Uh, let's use K right. I'll just paste that in there for the moment. So the file name to use is that. So we'll need that for the kernel. And we also need to change this bit here. So we need this number here as well to modify the make.conf. So let's put that in there as well. So let's edit etc portage bank.conf and as it says there for a specific processor we just copy well that basically and then copy the code we had which is all of that and paste that in so that's telling the portage system that's our specific processor Or to the microcode for it. So we're armed with everything. We've got some kernel stuff to load uh, to set. So let's get on with the kernel. Uh, do it manually. So there's a full automatic approach distribution kernel. So the basic pre compiled full manual approach is what we're going to do, and a hybrid approach where you run a tool called Gen Kernel to build the kernel. So kernel installation tasks such as copying the kernel image to boot or the EFI system partition, generating init RAMFS or the unified kernel image, updating bootloader can be automated with install kernel, so something else can be done. Users may wish to configure and install install kernel before proceeding. See the kernel installation section for below. Something I've not done, I still do it totally manually because I'm still used to using Linux from scratch and doing that completely manually. 
but maybe one day I'll get round to it. So let's go to doing it completely manually. Manual configuration. Um, it's actually not that hard to do. Um, well, it says to install PCI, PCI utils here. It's quite useful to have. Let's install it anyway, even though we've already run it outside of the environment. Oh, we've got a new news item there. So let's, let's read that first. Okay, so it's about Draker, Draker and module microcode handling handling probably doesn't apply in this situation oh it is about this in that ram fs actually um that's what i was looking for before and that's why i couldn't find it because it hadn't appeared until i've installed the firmware so other users yeah other users may wish to disable the init ram fs RAM FS use flag, which is what I've done. So that's okay. So once again, let's try it and install this. Okay. Yeah, another thing to do is to run LSMod on the host to see what that's got. But generally, I think it produces so much output, there's probably way more there than we'll actually need. So I think the LS PCI with NNK gives a good output. And we can go through and cross check things. So it looks like it hasn't told us about installing the kernel. No, there's nothing there at the moment. So there must be something at the beginning that I've missed. Distribution kernels, kernel sources. Okay, yeah, this is it. This is a bit I've skipped past. So I need to run this bit here to get the kernel installed. So let's run that. And you can see it installs a few other tools, but this is the bit we're interested in. So it's going to install kernel 6.6.38. It actually installs a slightly modified version of the standard kernel. Gen 2, mostly, probably about 99.9% .9 of the time, everything's standard as you'd get it if you're downloading it from the, the upstream uh, maintainers. Occasionally, they just tweak things, probably just to make things a bit more stable. And the Linux kernel is one thing that they tweak. There's a, like a separate Gen 2 option in the set up for the kernel other than that like i say most of it nearly 100 percent of it is standard packages which is another thing i like about gen 2 i don't like all this um modularization of different packages that debian and ubuntu and so on use um, with slightly different names so you never know really what you're getting or you know what you want but you don't know what that package is uh, that that distribution is called that package or sub package even So yeah, it's a bit confusing this because it talks about um, a distribution kernel and then under that same section is a bit about downloading the sources when really the kernel sources should be, I think, part of the manual configuration, possibly. But I suppose that's a problem of having so many options. Yeah. 
is uh, having a book that can be uh, useful for everybody deciding what they want to do. So you can see this is quite a big package that takes a little while to install. That's done. Uh, there's some messages there, but it's nothing to worry about. So we've got the kernel sources installed. It says to list the kernels. And there we have 6638. And we need to select it. It's currently unselected because there's no star there saying that a default is selected. Is again, just like the editor variable. So if we now list them again, oh, it's there actually. So you can see that's the default kernel. So if we have, we can have multiple kernels installed, but one will be the default. So now if we look at the user source Linux, you'll see that it's a sim link to the actual version directory. So all we need to do is change into the Linux directory and we can start by making MR proper, which I always do. Uh, purely because of LFS, uh, generally it doesn't clean anything up, but it is apparently recommended to do that. Now I need to find a kernel to use. Um, you can use make def config and it creates quite a reasonable default configuration for the hardware that you're using, but you still need to add in things like uh, network adapters, wireless adapters and so on. Um, but and probably take out a lot of stuff that adds in by default that isn't required. A lot of hardware gets added in. Um, but I should have a kernel for this machine, which I need to find. I think I took a backup of it. Um, so I'll just pause the video while I find that and put that on here. I'll just clear that. Uh, yeah, I'll come back when I've located that and put that on here. Okay, so I've copied the kernel onto here so let me get it off it's actually from an early version so I'm hoping a that it won't be too much of a difference from the fact that it's an older version and also b that it's standard kernel configuration rather than a gen 2 configuration but we'll find out so I've cleaned the output directory or the uh, sources directory rather copy that here in, in here I'll do make old config to update it it should ask me some questions I imagine hope not too many uh, except defaults where I don't know what they're for Probably don't need that actually, but I'll leave that as yes. I'll have to just go through this and check any extra settings. So this is for hardware I haven't got, so I'll just accept the default. No, I don't want it. So that's got support for Lunar Lake. So I'm not sure what that is. I can see Tiger Lake's been set to yes, which is what I need. So I'm going to attempt that and say no. So Gen 2 Linux support, this is, this is the bit that's different from the standard kernel. So yes, I do want that because it's got lots of useful defaults. I'll just accept the defaults for this. System D, no, definitely don't want that. Okay, so that was okay. That was just a few updates and the changes between the standard kernel and Gen 2. So what I'm going to do now is to do make menu config as it suggests in the book. And it's actually got the Gen 2 specific options. So let's check them first. So they're down the bottom. 
so basically everything should be turned on um, it hasn't got the kernel self-protection project I'm not sure what that is so I'll leave that as it was that was the information looks like that page is actually a little bit out of date let's look in here yeah I don't actually want system D so open RC is fine that's good so there's nothing to change there make sure that every driver is vital that is vital to booting the system so as I say I've used this kernel before on this machine so it should be okay as I say if you're not too sure with the uh, building a manual kernel or you can go away and do the automatic one or the gen kernel one as we saw before otherwise if you do want to have a go at uh, building a manual kernel and you're unsure I have got a video if you look in my playlist there's about three or four videos I think about building your own kernel manually and configuring and so on I'll go into a lot more detail about all the options it's a little bit old it's a year or two old but it should still mostly fit in with current kernels um, so I'm going to go through and just check a few important things general setup so I've got a suffix here to indicate to me when I build the kernel what the kernel is built for if I just see it lying around or I want to move this to another machine I know where or what the machine the kernel is built for so that's quite useful to have um, desktop kernel yeah that's a uh, preemption kernel that's probably a good one to have uh, course scheduling for SMT what's that one don't need that these two are useful building the kernel configuration into the kernel and also to expose it through the um, virtual file system as well as you've seen enough I've um, used that I think in this video I can't remember now but I use it all the time so it's def definitely recommended to have those two set um, some of these options may also be set because of gen 2 occasionally you'll build something and it says that something's not set in the kernel so you have to come back and add that setting in because some piece of software expects something to be set in the kernel um, so even if um, there are certain things unset at the moment they may need to be set later on probably don't need that one yeah don't need that so process family well um, it's a core 2 there's no new option there so there's no point in changing that 16 CPUs well if I did move this onto a new machine as arguably it could have more CPUs and the kernel will be limited to 16 but the chance of that happening are minimal and in any case I'd probably be rebuilding the kernel for the new machine anyway and at that point I could increase that if there were more CPUs machine check exception so it's an Intel machine I'll leave that there um, probably don't need that actually Oh, for 64-bit, this is recommended if a system is Intel Core i7 or later. AMD Optron or EM64 T Yuma. Okay, maybe it is needed, possibly. Right, that's not needed. Should I check uh, the raid or something? Yeah, now. 
I think it was. Yeah, I can't imagine I'll be using any raid on this system so I can get rid of all of this. May or may not, may not need that, but I'm going to leave it unchecked. This may be stuff for possibly BTRFS. Don't want anything experimental, don't want mirrors. So there's some stuff in there that is pretty pointless, I think. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'll just check this. I've got to make sure XFS is built in because that's my main file system. ResourFS support deprecated. Right, I don't need that. I'll get rid of that completely. JFS, well, it's probably in there because of something like part ed or gparted, able to modify uh, foreign file systems or partitions with foreign file systems on, so I'll leave that there, even though I'm not aware that I've ever used it. Um, access support deprecated v4. Right, I don't, I'm not aware that I've got that, so I'll deselect that. Quote support could be useful, POSIX ACL. Not sure what that is. Right, I'll leave that. It says recommended no. Let's look at that one. Experimental. I'm going to check that for both warnings. Right, it's not recommended. That's okay. This may be useful, possibly I'll leave it in there. Uh, let's check this, I want all that selected. That looks okay, XFAT, UTFA. Miscellaneous file systems. Probably don't need anything there. Let's have another check. UFS. Yeah, at the moment, there, there are some things I have used in there, but I don't think there's anything I'd use at the moment, so I'll leave that out of the kernel. So NFS, SMB. I'm not going to be running a server, SMB server, so I'll leave that unchecked. Native language. Yep, that looks okay, I think. Right, so they're the ones I'm happy with. Oh, one thing, I'll just check some of the device drivers, actually. Uh, PCI Express. I say this has been used on this machine, um, but I really want to make sure. That, um, everything's all up to scratch. NVMe, that's one thing I need. That's okay. SCSI support, I've got that. Uh, run all drivers. Don't need that.
don't really need that either. Lib ATO. So there's a chance I might need that um, if I put another disk in this machine. SFF, right, there's no parallel ID interface in this machine, so I don't think I need that. So that should be sufficient. Right, I could actually disable all of that, I think. Network device, Ethernet driver support, Intel. Yeah, that's the correct one. Okay, I think all this hardware should be fine. Oh, sound card support. Right, that's possibly not needed. But what I'd like to do is to leave things in I'm un unsure about, get something working, and then start to remove the old stuff. Unless the old stuff interferes with new stuff, of course, but uh, it's generally the better way. So PCI, I have to select this to get the HD audio menu up. If you don't select that, you can't access the HD audio menu. And then I need to select... I think that needs to be there, that's all right. USB sound, that doesn't need to be checked, but that does because we want the open firmware support. Uh, yeah, Tiger Lake. You can see how this is quite confusing because there's no mention of Rocket Lake there at all. Um, but all the other lakes seem to be there. So that looks all good. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is to go through, let's save that, rerun it, go through all the settings as recommended by the Gen 2 book now to make sure they're set. They should be mostly, they might not all be, but they should be. So device driver, generic driver options, maintain a dev temp FS, it's set already, and auto mounts, so that's good. Uh, device driver, SCSI devices support. And we need to check that device, SCSI device support. Yep, that one there, and disk support. So it looks like we don't need CD-ROM or generic. Then, yeah, the SARS from password, but, well, I'll just check them, but let's check them again. Device drivers, serial ATA drivers, ATA ACPI support, got that. SATA port multiplier support, well, I'm not sure if I do need that because, well, I suppose it depends on the hardware. I mean, the SATA ports might be on a port multiplier unknowingly, but I don't think they are. And in any case, I haven't got any way of checking at the moment because I've only got the NVMe drive. I do plan on adding um, SATA devices later. So I'll leave that unchecked. If it doesn't work, I'll be back here anyway to check to see what other options there are. AHCI SATA support. So that's checked. ATA BDMA support. Right, looks like this is a little bit out of date again because that's not there. Um, I haven't got any... Um, ATA bus mastering devices. There's no IDE in this machine, so there's nothing else to check here at all. So click that one. 
and NVMe support. Well, I've already checked this, but let's check it again. Express block device and hardware monitoring is probably a good one to have. All right, okay, that's just showing that the options have changed between version 4 and version 5. And as you can see, we're already on version 6.6, .6, and this page unfortunately hasn't been updated. Enabling additional NVMe support. So it recommends multi path support. Okay, let's see if that is any useful. Hardware monitoring we've already got set. Um, I'm not sure if I need these. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're that actually necessary. And target support, is that because I haven't selected any of these maybe? I'm not sure. But I'm not going to check any of these. So I've already checked the file systems. Let's check that again because there's some additional things I didn't check. Um, this is under the main menu, file systems. So we've got ext support, ext3. Um, it's probably advisable to have the access control list ticked as well. No, that's not there. Uh, BTRFS and XFS. I'll selected DOS FAT file systems. Yep, MS DOS file system VFAT got that and sudo file systems. Proc file system support is already selected and temp FS virtual memory file system support. So that's also selected. Enabling PPOE support, don't need that. So I'm going to check to see if it is actually enabled and disable it. So network device support. Yep, it's disabled, so that's okay. SMP, back again to the top, processor type and features. Well, yes, it is set because I've already seen that the processors are set to set 16. USB human interface device support or input device support. So back to device drivers. HID is there. Battery level support. Yeah, that can be useful. Generic head driver. Uh, USB support. XHCI is set. EHCI and OHCI. EHCI set. OHCI set. Unified support for USB 4 and Thunderbolt. Unified support. Oh, it's on the upper menu. There it is there. So what's it say for this? Well, 
Right, I'm not sure if this machine's got either USB 4 or Thunderbolt. In fact, I'm pretty sure it hasn't. Um, I'll leave that unchecked if I find that one of the USB ports is not working. I'll know to check that. It's got 3.1 or 3.2, I think. Um, but I don't think I've seen anything about the USB 4. So I'll leave that. Sign kernel modules, enable the module, loadable module support. Multiple signature verification. Automatically sign all modules. And it should be with SHA 512, it says there. Enable load on module support module or signature verification. Require modules to be validly signed. I hope this doesn't cause any problems. I'll have to uncheck this. I've never used this before. Right, yeah, I think I'll actually leave this off. This looks like it's uh, going to be more trouble than it's worth. Um, it is optional. Uh, maybe something I'll have to try once the system's up and running. I don't tend to use modules anyway unless I have to. Or there's something I know I might use, possibly. Yeah, this is quite involved, actually. Okay, so Gen 2 can be signed and work with secure boot enabled. So although we turned it off initially, um, looks like it is capable of working. So some more information there about architecture specific. Um, so not got IA32 emulation because I'm not going to be running 32-bit code. Uh, under binary emulations. Yep, leave that. GPT, enable the block layer, and partition types, so allow PC BIOS types and EFI GUID and advanced selection support, yep that's all good. Enable support for UEFI, so this is important because this is how we're booting. So processor type and features, EFI runtime support, stub support and mixed mode. That's deprecated, so let's get rid of that. We've got mixed mode support. Graphics, which is under device drivers. Frame buffer devices. What's that? Not sure if I need that. Frame buffer devices, there it is there. Support for frame buffer devices and EFI based frame buffer support. So I need to check that. Back all the way out of that and then go to file systems, pseudo file systems, and EFI variable file systems checked. So the SOF firmware covered earlier on. So back to 
device drivers, sound card support, advanced links architecture, also for SOC, which is there, sound open firmware support, there it is there, PCI enumeration, ACPI, and don't need AMD, don't need these two, so that should be fine. So hopefully that is it. So we'll start the build. Um, right, make on its own won't work with all the threads because there's no make flag set and make ops is purely for portage. So I'll have to, yeah, it does actually say there, enable the parallel builds, make minus JX, which is a number of parallel tasks that allow to launch. So I'll set 16 and wait for this to build. It should just take a few minutes, I would have thought. Okay, so it's done after three minutes. That's not too bad. So as it says there, we use make and make install to um, install the kernel. Uh, there's no separate boot being used in this build. So um, it should just go straight onto the host system. So make install. I actually do the install first myself and then I do the make modules install to install any modules. Um, one thing I've just thought of is I didn't go through all the PCI hardware. Um, it should be... Uh, can I detach this? I can't. I guess I can. It should be pretty standard um, and already set in there, but I'll double check anyway. So let's do make menu. config and just make some adjustments uh, so I'll search for these see if we can find anything I seal uncore Let's search for that instead no there isn't So I'm not sure if that's something that's just recognized. Uh, I'll have to check for that. Uh, kernel module. So there's the modules that I think I can search for. 5915. Yeah, that's in use. If I select one. Uh, you can see there it says HD graphics. So... Um, that should be sufficient. In fact, that one's called DRM915. Bearing in mind, this is not exactly the same kernel version. This will be a slightly older one on the live CD, I'd imagine. Um, USB controller. Happy we've got that. Oh, it's USB 3.2. Okay. XHCI takes care of that, so we've got that installed. We saw that WLAN uses IWL Wi Fi. Let's look for that. So that's set to a module, so that's fine because uh, I don't really use Wi Fi. Let's check the hardware. Um, 
that device. Wireless LAN. So that's the Wi-Fi. DVM, oh, it looks like that is the actual driver itself. So I'll have to find out if that works when I set it up, if I bother setting it up that is. Next we've got this hardware management interface, so MEIME, -E. for what it's worth, it's not totally set up by the looks of it. Yep, so I need to include that. MEIME, AHCI, I've seen that that's installed. Obviously got PCI Express. We've set up the sound for Tiger Lake. Let's look for this particular one, ensure that it is set. It should be. Okay, it's not called the same. Let's see if we can find out what it is called. Uh, sound card support. Um, that's what I want. Okay, so again, the name's probably changed. That looks close enough. SND, SOF, PCI, TGL, probably Tiger Lake. So, SM bus and I801. So, I2C801 is installed. And SM bus. I2C SM bus is installed. So is that the driver, is it? Yeah, so that looks okay. Intel SPI controller. SPI, that's, that's not set. SPI Intel, SPI Intel, yeah it's not set so I need to set that the looks of it, SPI, select one, go into there and see if I can find the Intel version of it, it's not there. Intel PCI. Right, so that normally means that there's something else that needs to be checked if it won't jump to it when I search for it. SPI Intel PCI equals N. So this needs to be set. All right, I'm not sure why that's. Under SPI support, Intel, PCH, PCU, Intel. PCH, well, I can't see it there. SPI Intel PCI.
So it depends on SPI equals Y, which we just said. SPI master is yes, PCI is yes, and x86 equals yes, or compile test equals yes. Oh, and SPI mem, so that needs to be set. So SPI it must be that one. Yes, it is. So I need to set that one. Now I just saw everything change there. Yeah, here they are. They've just appeared. SPI until PCI. So let's put that in. That says that's dangerous, so I'm not going to bother with that one. So that's that done. And then we've got the network adapter and we've got NVMe. So that should be all the hardware supported in the kernel. And what I can do when I've rebooted is to rerun this and just check that um, everything has got something against it. So I'll just exit that. Save it and rerun the make. Which hopefully shouldn't take too long. Things we've got the kernel mostly built. Yeah, that was quick. And make install and install the modules. That's good. So gen kernel, skip that. Install kernel, skip that. No init ram fs. So there's lots of different ways of doing this. If we've got external kernel modules, which we haven't at the moment, well, it's good enough to get into the habit of running this in anyway, in case you find that you do have them. Um, three in particular, I know that I've come across on various machines. NVIDIA drivers have to be built after every new kernel change. Um, VirtualBox needs to have the modules rebuilt. And what's the third one? Uh, ZFS. That needs to be rebuilt. So that command will take care of anything. So if the, all three were on this machine, it will take care of all of them rebuild all the modules for those three packages. Okay, I've made a mistake of going through this before and it's not really necessary, so I'm going to skip through that. Um, it's only for exotic hardware, as it says there. 